four. Everybody loves him, everybody wants him, everybody knows him, everyone wants to go drinking with him, um, because he is a big ginger party animal. Oh, yeah, he's red-haired. He's not actually blonde, except for in the Marvel Universe. Sorry! Thor's main sidekick is, of course, his hammer, Mjolnir, and Mjolnir is something that we see a lot in Viking Age depictions of Thor. We see Mjolnir carved into runestones. Here's a nice Mjolnir carved into a runestone here. We have depictions of Thor holding Mjolnir. Here's a nice depiction of Thor holding Mjolnir here. And we have models of Thor's hammer. And when I say models, generally what I'm talking about is pendants. So Thor's hammers are a super, super popular accessory right now in the modern age, and they're generally worn by people who either really like things like Viking metal or Scandinavian heavy metal, uh, they're worn by people who just enjoy the idea of Norse material culture, they are worn by some groups who suck, and they're often worn by people who are legit, genuine, neo-pagan uh, worshippers of the old Norse gods. So Thor's hammers are really popular amongst lots of people, and of course historical reenactors like you and me love a good Thor's hammer. But there's a huge amount of variety that you might not be aware of. So you've probably seen loads of Thor's hammers for sale like these on the big internet shops where they're mass-produced and everybody gets one that looks like this, but do we really know where they all come from? And do we know which of these are historically accurate and which are authentic to the period. I'm guessing some people do, some people don't. If you have a favourite, authentic Thor's hammer, feel free to drop a link to it in the comments. Tell us about it. So Thor's hammers come in all kinds of shapes and sizes, and they're actually a really, really consistent artefact throughout the Viking Age. They're found all the way through, right the way up to the 11th century, all the way from the 8th century, so they're a good few hundred years. They're actually a lot more long-lived uh, than some of the other types of pendants that you see, like the spearhead pendants, uh, sword pendants, shield pendants, those sorts of things. Miniature axes are also hugely popular right the way through. These are obviously associated with the god Thor, and when we find them in an early medieval context, they obviously imply that the person who was wearing it was not a Christian. However, we've got really cool things like this cross and Thor's hammer mould that I've shown you guys in another video that shows that there was this sort of capitalist idea that if you can make money from a pagan, you can make money from a Christian because you can give them both shiny silver pendants. I don't care where the cash comes from as long as it comes to me. Love that. They come in all shapes and sizes. Thor's hammers come as a small sort of triangular headed hammer with a straight shaft or with a pointed shaft. Uh, that's then suspended from the chain, or from the thong, or from the finger loop braid, or whatever you're using to suspend your hammer from. They come with a flat head, they come with that sort of triangular, what we would now probably think of as a typical Thor's hammer head shape, right? Where it's got the kind of triangle profile with the ends cut off, like that. That's kind of the typical Thor's hammer, right? Uh, you get them very, very small. Some of them are, well, about an inch about the length of my thumb. Some of them are quite large, some of them are a couple of inches long, uh, some of them are very stumpy, some of them are long and quite elegant, and they come in a bewildering array of materials. Which material do you think we've found the most Thor's hammers from? Guess now. Guess in the comments. Guess now. What is the most common material we've got Thor's hammers made out of? Give me a guess. Did you guess? Have you put it in? Okay, I'll tell you. It's not silver. We've got over 50, we've got nearly 60 finds of silver Thor's hammers from all over Europe. We're not counting rings. We've got well over 100 rings that seem to have Thor's hammers uh, as part of the decoration, which we'll talk about. They're not gold. We've only got one gold Thor's hammer. It's iron. Iron Thor's hammers. We've got more than 100 Thor's hammer pendants and Thor's hammers made of iron from the Viking Age. Well over a hundred of them. Most of those are from Denmark or Sweden. We've got more than 50 from Denmark, we've got more than 60 from Sweden. So we've got loads of Thor's hammers made out of iron. So it seems like your local blacksmith 
might have a bit of a side gig going on just making little Thor's hammer pendants. They're pretty easy to make. You can cast them. Some of them are cut out of steel sheet of steel. Some of them some of them are cut out of sheet iron. Should we try that again? Some of them are cast, some of them are cut out of sheet iron, some of them may have been forged just from a bar. Uh, they're really, really popular items. If you're a less flashy Viking, you could get a little iron Thor's hammer. So this is another one of those times, like in my other videos about Viking jewellery, where there's options here at all ends of the scale. If you want to be a really, really ultra, super, mega, fancy, probably a king, get a gold Thor's hammer with beautiful granulated designs like this one. If you want to be lower status or you're just starting out in your reenactment journey but you like the idea of having a Thor's hammer, get yourself a little iron one. You can pick these things up for like a fiver, about five pounds, like seven bucks in today's money. They're really not expensive even today, which is probably why there were so many of them made. Other materials that we have Thor's hammers made out of, though, we have them made of amber. And these are obviously carved from amber from the Baltic, which is really popular in the Viking Age. Very popular as a bead material for making beads out of. Also the miniature axe heads that we mentioned in the previous video. There's a link going to be up somewhere, or it might have already been, who knows. And we have them made of silver and copper alloy. Copper alloy, very common material. Not so common to see Thor's hammers made out of it. Not sure why. Couldn't tell you. If anyone's got any theories, feel free to share them. The rings that we have with the Thor's hammers, a number of these come from Birka, and interestingly enough, most of them seem to have been worn by women. So it seems like a Thor's hammer pendant is something pretty much anybody can wear. Thor's hammer ring, also something anyone can wear. And when I say most worn by women, that's a little misleading. Eleven are in women's graves, nine are in men's graves. So that's a pretty even spread. So. These accessories uh, and the Thor's hammer symbol, far from being this hyper-masculine symbol that only a man would wear, seems like anybody can wear a Thor's hammer symbol. We also have um, an interesting spread of where these things are found. We find a lot of them in England. Obviously, the Dane law had a big Danish presence. Uh, the islands around Scotland had a big Norwegian presence. We've got a silver one from Iceland. Uh, that was obviously massively Norwegian. We have them from Norway, we have lots from Denmark, and we have lots from Sweden. And Denmark and Sweden are kind of the places where we're seeing more of some of these types of Thor's hammers. Thor's hammers, very popular, very varied, and really, really versatile right the way through the Viking Age. And like I say, they're found right the way up to the 11th century. Obviously, if you're portraying somebody who has been Christianized, they're not an appropriate thing for you to wear. You can wear a cross, you can wear a coin cut into a cross, you don't have to wear any kind of pendant at all. Did they make them out of wood? Maybe. If they've made them out of wood, they're not really surviving. Because wood doesn't really survive very well in most conditions. We may get a couple from a glacier, now that the world's being trashed. Were they making them out of bone or ivory or other organic materials? Quite possibly. We don't have much evidence for them being carved out of bone, but bone is a very popular material for making bits and pieces out of, uh, bone pins and needles and that sort of thing. So it's possible. If you want to go even further downscale from iron, you can get a lead one. We do have lead Thor's hammers. So you can get a lead Thor's hammer if you're not in the market even for an iron one. However, getting one cast in lead may end up costing you more than an iron one, because try and find a lead Thor's hammer that's just for sale. You might have to get that specially commissioned, which ironically will probably cost you more than just getting a ready-made iron Thor's hammer, which is really funny. So there you go, Thor's hammers are super popular, super versatile, they're a great thing to get and they're a great thing to have. They seem to have been very common, like I say, we've got hundreds of these things, we've got hundreds of finds of Thor's hammer, so they were clearly very popular items. You can wear them as everyday jewellery in the modern period. I've got a lovely silver one based on the Icelandic find, which is not to hand right now. This is perfect, I never have the thing I want to show you <laughs> to hand when I'm on camera. It's brilliant organisation. I really hope you enjoyed this little video today. I'm feeling a bit rough today because I've just had my second Covid jab, so hashtag pray for Jimmy. Uh, so I'm going to go and lie down for a bit before I do my editing. But thank you very much for joining. I'll see every single one of you next time. Who will I'm a draw?